Welcome back, everybody, to another 21st Century Renaissance uh, and another Open Interest Newsletter Breakdown on GameStop. Uh, I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lepiano, once again, and uh, now I'm coming to you guys from Aix-en-Provence in France on the road at a conference today, but uh, have some time to break down some of what we are anticipating coming up in GameStop. And in particular, I'm going to lay out uh, just a, a case today. Yeah, I'm going to make a case for why I think GameStop is in the midst of an institutional accumulation period. So a lot of this connecting, of course, to what I've been observing uh, in some of our broader market information. So we're going to take a look at that today. Uh, before we get into that, we are going to spend some time on our gratitude. And today's gratitude goes out once again to Gamma Chad, who has the est tierist of names uh, for helping uh, sponsor uh, today's uh, video breakdown. Uh, and video. Also, like to thank our monthly supporters, not medical advice, Masta Masta, who is recovering from a knee injury. Masta, I hope you feel better, my man. Um, good luck out there. I hope they gave you some good bets. Um, thanks go out as well to Kurt Lusko, Cosmotropic, The Swag 52, and Hey Lucky's, aka Faithless Luther. Thank you, go thank you guys so much for for helping support the channel, right? Especially, uh, you know, while I've been on the road here, uh, trying to trying to hold things together with, uh, for one reason or another, right, between conferences and uh, travel as well. So uh, thank you very much to everyone for your support, as well as for your patience, of course, last week, some of our technical difficulties. We will be back on track uh, with our live stream this Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Look forward to seeing you guys there talking through what's been going on, what's coming up, uh, maybe thinking about some of the company fundamentals and also talking about some trading strategies as we usually do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, really interesting day yesterday. We saw, uh, you know, a couple of Ryan Cohen interviews, uh, both on Fox Business and on CNBC. And really my takeaway from this um, that I was right, you know, we got these ideas that Cohen was going to start doing some more public appearances. Um, what I really liked about this is, you know, Cohen is coming out uh, on these major business networks, this legacy media, right, uh, on, uh, on in, in boomer space, as it were, and is emphasizing a narrative is emphasizing that GameStop ought to be considered a business that is evaluated in terms of its fundamentals. Everything that Cohen has iterated and did iterate in these two um, in these two interviews was very much centered on uh, you know distancing GameStop from this meme stock character. Of course, he's not doing so uh, via any form of alienation of the traditional investor base. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's not, uh, say, capitulating to institutional interests so much as he is emphasizing, look, you can keep betting against GameStop, but at this point, the writing is on the wall. If you bet against GameStop, chances are right now you are losing. Um, <laughs> now is your chance to get out if you're losing. Now is your chance to go ahead and switch your position. Now is the time to go ahead and uh, somewhat, um, you know, on the on the flip of uh, the uh, Michael Burry quote from the Big Short. Right now is the time to go ahead and secure that net long position yourself. And we can see how the narrative will go ahead and change as suddenly GameStop is this amazing, innovative. Uh, it's now, you know, in that tech space. I mean, right? Look at look at Charles here, right? Charles putting GameStop right in that tech category. And uh, what I'd like to point out is I think we, we may see some, some, uh, some signal, let's say, from our broader market data and potentially from GameStop as well that at least to me suggests that um, institutions are in the process of repositioning themselves uh, at, at this time of year, right? So we've been talking all week, which what I would say is very strange to me about the market, especially over the past couple of weeks, you know, we've been really hitting all time highs. Uh, you know, Bravos Research, for example, has been pointing this out for, for a number of weeks. They've gone ahead, exited all of their net long positions with respect to the market. Um, very interesting to continue to, to get their takes on this. Go check that out if you haven't had a chance yet. Um, what's very interesting to me is how I am seeing, right? I've been pointing this out in our gamma data. Um, and what we can see from market maker positioning here, or, uh, that is gamma exposure, um, we can see that the market is increasingly piling up put open interest. Uh, market makers are continually exposed uh, to more and more long puts. So we have all of this building up latent volatility to our downside, especially in the 620 to the 600 range. 600 is not quite showing up on this chart yet, but right, we see this accumulating. And where do we see it accumulate? We see a lot of this anchored 
out toward August OPEX, so August 15th. I mean, look at that. A third of our total put GEX is concentrated there on August 15th. Um, this is a very powerful signal. This is actually looking like that same sort of array of net put gamma exposure that we did see right going into March and April. Now, I did mention earlier, past couple of weeks, I did mention in particular that so far up to that point, it did not look like we were in store for that type of correction for that March type or that, that April type of correction. This, this positioning now does now suggest, even if it's not going to be, you know, back down into the 400s, um, a, a larger correction uh, seems to be on track, maybe coming out of July OPEX. Now, despite this, what's been very perplexing is although we've been tracking this, right, for the past couple of weeks, we've seen uh, put OI, we've seen this put GEX continue to accumulate underneath us. We've seen these supportive uh, IV suppressive call dominant positions uh, get overpowered by puts and come off the board. And yet we are not seeing the actual price come out, especially for this past more than a week, right? We are not seeing SPY's price come out of this 620 to 625 bracket. It's right there, right? 620 is a serious volatility trigger and we keep getting kind of volleyballed up into this 620 range. Now, what I think is happening is precisely the inverse in SPY of what is happening now in GameStop. So what I think is occurring in the broader market is that institutions are going through a distribution cycle. So those of you who are familiar with Wickoff theory, right? Uh, institutions will go through sequences of distribution and accumulation, right? So when the market is going down, when the market is hanging out at low levels, when you're in that point, you're like, man, this, how, this can't think just can't stay down here. Like, how can it stay down here? What major institutions are doing is they are using that opportunity to accumulate. When the price goes up, 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 you're like, wow, this is looking pretty overextended. How is this thing staying up here? This thing has got to go down. Institutions are in the process of distributing. That is, they are taking profits, they are rotating out of positions, and they need the time to do this. And so what we see is we see this kind of freezing effect. How is this thing staying here? This is ridiculous. How is GameStop staying at $23 for weeks on end? How is the market staying in the 620 to 625 bracket for weeks on end, right? So in the case of the, the broader market, what we see is GameStop is, or excuse me, uh, S&P 500 is frozen up. It's frozen up at these elevated price levels, while institutions, I would argue, are likely in the process of distributing. At the same time, we see GameStop frozen down, right? Is just, it continues to hang out weeks and weeks and weeks. We're now four weeks hanging out right above the 100 week simple moving average, right? So this deep support here that's really served as a liftoff point uh, for the entirety of the last year, right? So all of our key reversals, our key bullish uh, price action um, in GameStop has occurred after several weeks of consolidation right above this 100 week simple moving average. And yet we continue to just kind of hang out there, right? Bouncing off of this line. What I expect is happening, right? GameStop, and this falls in line with Ryan Cohen's comments. What we are seeing, uh, both in terms of what the narrative is projecting, uh, if we're seeing this come to the fore in the narrative, it means that this is already developing behind the scenes while we speak. What I suspect is that in this time period, after seeing GameStop do what GameStop has done, after the company has been able in the past calendar year to acquire over $9 billion in cash reserves, um, as they have been able to leverage uh, their own volatility, as they've been able uh, to leverage these potential legacy short positions uh, in order to get this, uh, you know, zero percent interest capital, right? What uh, what we are seeing and is likely the case is now institutions. We have seen institutions continue to accumulate. I think this is a new golden opportunity for institutions to see the writing on the wall with respect to GameStop earnings, as we will see. I expect in September, an account you can check out on this is Fox and Flask. Um, I linked it in today's article. Um, we are likely moving into a console super cycle on the heels of Switch 2, which has the potential for breaking all console sale records. Um, GameStop is going into, has shored up 
the has used this sort of down period, this console off cycle in order to shore up the legacy business. Ryan Cohen has executed masterfully on this since 2023. The next three quarters will be compoundingly excellent in terms of revenue from console sales and its peripheries in terms of software sales and in terms of growing PSA. Now, what's going, this is going to be our first full year with this partnership with PSA, and it continues to grow quarter over quarter of this partnership. It has continued to occur since October of last year, and we're going to see this combine this year into this console super cycle. GameStop earnings will be good. GameStop's next three earnings will be good. The company has logged two year over year uh, finance, fiscal years of profitability. It has logged a full year. Um, in fact, I think four quarters running now. Uh, so Q2, 24, Q3, Q4, 24, and now Q1, 25, uh, have all been profitable quarters. So that, that's four straight quarters of profitability. GameStop has not logged a profitable Q1 since well before the 2020 sneeze, the 2020, 2021 sneeze. I mean, I think we have to go back to like 2017 and like the PS, I think switch one, maybe not even then for Q1. So this is really set to be a very special year for GameStop uh, earnings, excuse me, earnings wise. And I would not be surprised to see that institutions have, have seen the writing on the wall and are in the process of accumulating uh, long positions in the company right now in order to take advantage of that fundamental appreciation on the tail of a profitable earnings, um, on profitable earnings and right even uh, returns on this very large cash pile uh, over the next three quarters. This is the time, and I would expect just as we see that weakness is coming in and likely coming in in the broader market going into August OPEX, uh, I would expect maybe coming out of op August OPEX and going into our quarter two sales, uh, uh, I should say quarter two, um, revenue report, uh, earnings report, that we start to see GameStop price up within that, uh, yeah, that that bracket of time. Um, of course, another question, open question will be what happens, of course, with interest rates. Maybe that will continue uh, to send things uh, back north. It does look like FedWatch is projecting um, interest rate change, the next uh, cut to occur, probably not on the July 30th meeting, uh, but later in Let's see, do we have a September meeting this year? I think we do. I think we have it actually just after, oh, I think we have it just after GameStop quarter two earnings report. GameStop quarter two earnings report is that Tuesday, September 9th. The following Thursday, I believe the 11th, may be our next, it's either the 11th or the 18th. Actually, it may be the 18th, likely occurring on September uh, 18th. So if we look at our options data, you know, we always do. Um, and part of this uh, does pertain to the way in which uh, institutions, but also uh, in which uh, I myself, of course, go about uh, building uh, my position, right? And that is through using uh, especially short option strategies in order to continue to accumulate and build my GameStop position. I've been doing this regularly. I've been continuing to utilize um, uh, largely at this point in time. Um, covered call spreads over a number of different uh, expiries and using the premium, of course, to just immediately go ahead uh, and purchase shares to continue to, to uh, increase my position. Of course, this is not exhortation. This is not financial advice. This is not telling you to go invest. This is not telling you to go ahead and use option strategies. This is what I do. And uh, so far, this, is, this has allowed me to meet many of my multiple term um, investment and uh, trading goals. Um, GameStop is, I will, you know, full disclosure, GameStop is the only stock I'm invested in. It is also the only uh, ticker that I uh, trade um, using these short option strategies. Uh, so, yeah, really, if we look at our options data, we're kind of seeing neutral sentiment, right? So this is largely tells me the market is largely doing something similar here. Um, we have maybe day traders uh, kind of hot potatoing stuff back and forth. Uh, but largely short option strategies are, are dominating in this environment and especially short volatility, even though we are seeing this kind of historically low volatility. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's what we're largely dealing with here. Max Payne, unchanged, our gamma environment. Um, you know, there was kind of a chance earlier in the week we were looking at something uh, like uh, a potential move into this 24 to 25 range, this very tight gamma bracket that we have here kind of getting pinned there and then maybe we get slipped below that. Um, there is a chance for that type of move. Still today, I mean, it is Wednesday. We do have time to come out of that. We do have time to allow Charm to kind of scoot us down there with a couple of targeted um, uh, uh, short, interventive shorting episodes. 
Um, but uh, yeah, by and large, I'm, I'm not really expecting anything, um, you know, beyond, you know, I imagine this 24 and this 25 position are likely closing the week um, out of the money in July OPEX uh, will be, yeah, pretty, pretty boring again to the benefit of any, anyone that is uh, going ahead and using this time as a critical window for, uh, for accumulation. So yeah, that's basically my outlook uh, right now. Uh, but that also is why, in looking at this, I am uh, I am particularly um, I am particularly excited, right? So this is um, if institutions are accumulating, right? Whatever, whenever we see something, wherever we're say uh, not uh, happy, let's say with what we're not excited about what the price is doing um, in a conventional sense, right? It's not you know it's not ripping. We're not getting rocket ships and all that stuff. Um, then uh, probably what an institution is doing, you know, especially if the fundamentals are in place uh, with respect to the company, um, institutions are probably accumulating. So we probably see an inverse of that right now uh, with SPY. Um, right? You remember that we actually, we, we ripped uh, back in April uh, when, uh, when SPY was moving to the downside there. So pretty, pretty tremendously. So maybe we see something, maybe we see something repeat. Uh, maybe the pattern uh, reemerges here going into uh, August OPEX or coming out of August OPEX. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, of course, we also have what around August 12th, I think, is something like institutional filing deadline. So we can see who in particular uh, goes ahead and has been going ahead and will go ahead through the rest of this uh, down period uh, into, uh, yeah, into into accumulation. So that's my outlook uh, here, you know, midweek on Wednesday for you guys. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, as always, of course, uh, for your support. Uh, thanks for watching and listening. And uh, yeah, good luck out there with your trades. Good luck out there with your investment. And of course, uh, let's go GameStop. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.